Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Underground Gospel Radio. Listen, man, get your people in the building, man. We just going, going, and going ahead to get it started, man. Because I want everybody to get as much information as they can possible and understand what, what we about to do, man. What we about to do So listen Click like and share Man get your people In the building man Follow us on YouTube TikTok Twitter um, Facebook um, Everywhere I, I mean we got All the social media So make sure you follow us Definitely on YouTube Man we trying to get Our numbers up So we can definitely Start going live On there too as well But even though We do have a YouTube And it's live Everything that you see now Is on YouTube So man get your people In the building man Alright So um we gonna go ahead, man, and get this thing started, man. We gonna go ahead and get this thing rolling, man. And I'm telling you, I'm so excited uh, uh, to have uh, this this guest um, in the building today, man. And I'm telling you, she she gonna come with the fire, just like I said, with that heat. And uh, man, I'm I'm excited, man. Of what's about to go down? So, um, like I said, get your people in the building, get everybody, um, you know, um, you know, get everybody tuned in, so we can get this thing rolling. All right, all right. All all right, so here it is. Here it is. I'm your boy, Selfless the Artist. I'm your brother. I'm your nephew. I'm your cousin, but I ain't your daddy. I'm your boy, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> and in the studio, I mean, well, she's not in the studio, but we got her on the mic, man. Listen, we got Evangelist Shante. I'm telling you, she is in the building. She is on the mic, man. Listen, um, I can see in the comments already, you know, everybody like, hey, I love her. I know her. I know her. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but listen, man, while we started, before we get the topic rolling, man, go ahead, um, Shanta, um, Evangelist, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let us know a little bit. You know, let everybody know that don't know you uh, know about you. So go ahead, man. Uh, go ahead and uh, let everybody know. Enlighten, enlighten the new people. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? <laughs> I am Shanta. Okay. Um. You know, you if you want to say evangelist, that's fine. But I am Shante. I'm a former secular music hip hop rapper. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I still got bars, but they're for Jesus now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been saved for two years, and I've been on fire from the day the Lord came to me in my living room and changed my life forever. Oh, that's um, wow! Wow. So I am just blessed to be here. I'm thankful to be here. Um, I feel like one of the disciples in the Bible, y'all, low key, because when I got paid, my journey is still happening behind closed doors. My wow. ministry is happening behind closed doors. I haven't been released to the world. Um, social media is a way of me reaching souls, and you know, people know my story and they know where I come from. So I just want to be able to. Uh, promote the new me, so I use my social media platform for that. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as my ministry and the things that I'm doing, um, it's been in private for two years. Okay, so I'm excited because I believe that the Lord will be releasing me um, at some point. But for now, we're gonna keep it secret. Yes, that's good. Yes, we're gonna keep you a diamond in the rough right now. Mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna keep you diamond in the rough right now until until the Lord uh see fit to pop you out and be discovered. Um, I'm definitely a, a big fan of that, you know, to to wait your your turn and wait your season, wait, wait until God, you know, releases you and call you, you know, out of what you know where you are. You know, some people some people jump out too soon. You know, and right. uh, some people and that's how people get hurt. That's how people get, you know, damaged. That's how people, you know, um, you know, start walking away from from Christ because they popped out too soon. They came out. They came out guns blazing and wasn't ready for <laughs> and and wasn't ready for for the for the uh, for the enemy that sneak that's that's sneaking around from the garbage can that they can't see. <laughs> You know, and and I'm telling you, you just got to be ready when God calls you, and you know, and and I'm I really appreciate that right there, what you just said. Just hey, when God ready to release you, and when God ready to just you know have someone discover you, or you just pop out, hey, that's what it is. 
is. That's what it is. So listen, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into this topic, man. And I think I really, I'm really um, excited about this topic. I mean, I'm definitely excited about the topic because of the simple fact, you know, it's one of those topics that, you know, people really are, let's just go for it. Let's just go for it. So the topic for this week is the topic for this week is a man's and a woman place. So let me say that again, a man and woman's place. And I know you're sitting there saying like, Hey, what, what is you really saying there? What is you really saying there? What I'm saying here is when we talking about, you know, um, a man in a woman's place, we're talking about literally one of those um, controversial topics. We, it, this is very controversial. I, and when I say controversial, this is one of those topics you'd be like, yo, wait, hold on, hold on. Um, <laughs> uh, a lot of churches have been talking about it and a lot of uh, podcasts and radio stations have been talking about it. And um, we're going to talk about it. Right. We're going to talk about it. We're going to put it out there. And guess what? We're going to provide scripture. We're going to actually get it from the Bible, from the source, you know, uh, from from Paul, from, you know, people that have been uh, been walking with with Jesus and, mm -hmm. you know, put things in perspective and and put things in guidelines. Um, so we're going to get it from the source and we're going to talk about it and we're going to elaborate. We're going to, you know, have our how our opinions, because I ain't gonna lie. I have some questions. I have some questions for you guys. I have some questions for, you know, Sh uh, Shante, you know, um, I, I just have some questions because me as a leader, you know, I'm, I'm at that point where it's like, okay, everybody's coming up with their own doctrines. Everybody's coming up with their own perspectives. Everybody's coming up that everybody's coming up with something that is conducive for their living or for their lifestyle or for their own church or for their own benefit or for their own home. So I'm going to ask questions and I'm going to talk about it today because of the simple fact that, you know, it, enough is enough because, you know, we, we living in a world of confusion. And I'm gonna just put it out there. We just living in a world of confusion, a world of, you know, one of those things that you be like, you know what? I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I don't know what I'm doing. I, 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 I'm following this person. I, I kind of believe what that person say. So listen, let's let's go ahead and lay, lay it out flat on the table. Let's go ahead and let's put those hard things out there. Let's put those hard questions out there. Even if you have a questions out there in the comment section, um, in the comments or whatever, Go ahead, pop those questions in there. I can see it, you know, and the host can see it as well. Um, guest host can see it as well, and Shanta can see it. So, so put those questions out there. We're going to definitely stop in between conversations and actually see if we can answer them, see if we can shed light on them, or if you have something that you want to actually put out there. Hey, put it in the comments. We can see it, and we're going to go ahead and um, you know, see what, see what, see what's uh, see what's up today. All right. <laughs> so, listen. So let's 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 get into it. Let's get into it. So a man, a man uh, and woman's place. So here, I believe that, you know, it's gotten so bad in 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 retrospect where, you know, a lot of things that happens in the home and the way the homes are set up and the way that homes are ran. A lot of things have crept into the church. Yeah. A lot of things have, you know, uh, bled over into the church where, you know, a woman is now either a head of the household based on uh, even uh, the income. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if a woman makes more, you know, than the man, man. or whatever, Jeez. now the woman has become the head. Right. And it's like that is not, you know, um, that's not right. I ain't gonna lie. That's 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 really not right. So, however, it's just one of those things where it's a big country controversy where you know women have been left as well 
in that role of raising families by themselves, raising uh, their children, raising, you know, their, 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 their herd by themselves, mm -hmm. you know, where men have walked out, men have, you know, just went on and either developed other families or, you know, have literally dedicated their life to the church right. and, you know, really um, mishandled the family. That's true. You know, so there's many situations mm -hmm. that can go into this conversation, you know, that have, you know, really solidify the order yeah you know the order of 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 the household right you know so there's a lot of different situations that we're going to elaborate and we're going to talk about because you know that's what's happening now so just to get your um understanding and perspective um i want to do first timothy 2 8 through 15 there is a god god given order there's a god given order this is this has been written you know um in, in the book of first Timothy two and eight fifteen. So we're going to really, really pretty much kind of go off this scripture right here. Um, and it reads, I want men and I want men everywhere. This is verse eight. I want men everywhere to lift up holy hands in prayer without anger or dis uh, disputing. Uh, number nine. I also want women to dress modestly with decency and property. All right. So not with braided hair or gold or pearls or expensive clothes. Number 10, but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. Number 11, a, a woman should learn in quietness and full submission. Right. Number 12, I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. She must be silent. 13, for Adam was formed first, then Eve. 14, and Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. 15, but women will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with property. So that's that's Bible. That's what I read. That's First Timothy two eight fifteen. You guys can go back and read that, and you know, let me let, 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 put it in the comment what you think of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, giving giving Shanta a, a chance. What, what do you think? What are your what are your views? Just to start this conversation out, um, in 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 perspective. Um, <laughs> it's funny that's the first mm -hmm. uh, chapter and verse that you went to because I actually had that written down. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I think Timothy pretty much um, said everything. But I think as women, we have to understand that the Lord is not saying that there's no value to us mm -hmm. or we're less than. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's just an order that things go in, right? Yes, yes. Um, so that goes to uh let me see here. Um first Peter chapter 13, verse 7, um, where Peter was basically letting a woman know where she stands, but also letting a man know what he's supposed to be for the woman. Mm, yeah, yeah. So we know that we know that the Bible says that. A woman is a weaker vessel, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, in so many ways, that could be physically, um, and what I've seen is also spiritually, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because it goes back to what Timothy said. It wasn't Adam that fell short. Right. It was right. He because he why she's the weaker vessel? Yes. So she needed the man to keep her in place. Mm -hmm. So when God came looking he didn't come looking for eve he came looking for adam mm. what is that mm. Mm. because adam was supposed to check eve <laughs> <laughs> you know listen listen so listen we want that as women we talk about it all the time like oh i feel like i have to do so much as a woman you know i just want to play my role as a wife and this that and third but when my Bible, mm -hmm. they don't want to hear that. Yeah. They want to be in disagreement with the order. But it's something that we yearn for as women anyway. It's in us. Yeah. We just have to get in a place of being obedient. Mm, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think I think that actually, you know, now I want to actually stretch. I want to I want to actually oppose a question. Is there a difference between obedience and submissiveness? Is there a difference between obedience and submissive? And here's why I say because obedience kind of in lines with submissive. Right. So right. but with obedience is so um, is one of those words that is so. Uh, demanding and looked upon as um, as how can I say um, as diminishing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's diminishing to the point where it's like, OK, yeah, you better do it or, you know, I, I, I have to do it or I have to, you know, think. But then the crazy thing is the reason why I say that is because when you look at obedience and submission, these are things that God requires. Right. These are things that God requires. So if you have a problem with the God given order of of a man and a woman in the household versus a church, these are things that you're you're questioning God about. Say, hey, listen, I, I, I get it that we're supposed to be submissive to our husband, you know, but at the same time, what if he what if this? What if that? What if this? And it's like, OK, there is no what if it's to the point where. It, it, you have to do it and you have to fall in line and you have to be obedient to what, you know, the word is saying, you know, and we have an issue and a problem with the word. And that's where that's what we boil down to, where we have a problem and an issue with how the word is put in retrospect, because then we'll quote a scripture, but then we won't follow the scripture. Mm -hmm. And that's 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 pretty much what we have subjected our life to, you know. So here it is, submissive and obedience that is in one of those things where it's like, oh, man, shoot. You know, how do I be submissive to my husband? How do I be, you know, submissive to, you know, uh, um, the church? How do I be obedient? How do I be, you know, I don't know if somebody want to get the actual difference in the meanings of submissiveness and obedience, because I think that's very interesting to, uh, to this conversation because of the simple fact that, you know, um, you know, it, it will really, really, um, identify the problem, you know, that we, that we have in the body of Christ and in the household. You know, yeah, that's true. It says um, in something that I was reading, it says that when you compare the two, you're comparing power and authority. Mm. So it's like um, submission and obedience is just like power and authority. Then it broke it down and it went to obedience is following orders, commands or instructions. Obedient does not guarantee a person's willingness to comply with orders. Um, submission is more so yielding to power or authority. Mm. In submission, a person has respect and a love for those in power. Mm. Okay. Um, unlike obedience, where the individual, individual succumbs to power merely as a reaction to power, in submission, the individual's reaction is guided by genuine desire to follow instructions. Mm -hmm. That's that's actually very interesting. Mm -hmm. That's actually but so 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 the crazy thing about that is one thing stuck stuck out to me is instructions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How many people really fail at following instructions? And I think that see the crazy thing is how we fail in following instructions, we question the instructions. We question the instructions as it pertains to how it needs to fit for our life mm -hmm. and, it, and how it fits for our life and how it fits for, you know, how we, you know, um, can jail this whole um, this whole thing called, you know, um, life that we living and, you know, what we're society. Right. How we how we look at that is how we need to follow instructions. How many people have and this is not this is not to to attack the 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 government or anything of that nature however but this is the attack the 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 mental state of individuals that have you know have not followed the guidelines even during whole covid mm -hmm. right. how many people could have avoided death had they followed the instructions mm. how many people could have avoided so many different things in their life now had they heed to the instructions mm. So it's, it's different things in different ways that we, we, you know, it's not saying that men are better than women. No. 
It's not saying that, you know, men are uh, uh, that knows everything. But however, it's not the one that, hey, you can't put yourself in that position due to what has written in the Bible. Right. Right. You can't put yourself in that. Right. You know, so here I, I, I want to actually look at there's two types of there's two types of um, of positions or views, if you however you want to uh, uh, put it. There's two types of uh, positions or views that Christians take on and, and question the day. Right. So the position um, is often called a a egalitarian mm -hmm. egalitarian that's a position right so the egalitarian view would say that there is no god ordained order in gender or therefore men and women have identical I uh, roles in both church and home the other position is usually called the complementarian view so the complementarian view uh, would say that, yes, there is a God ordained order in gender and therefore men and women have different but complementary uh, complementary uh, roles in the church and home. So um, but we I, you know, pretty much I believe that the Bible teaches a um, the second of these complementary that there is a God ordained order in gender in gender. And that this has important implications for the roles of men and women in the church and in the home. So with that being said, there is two views that a lot of people that makes this controversy where there, that people are saying there is no God ordained order. There is no God ordained order in gender. Mm -hmm. So this is what society is looking like, looking like. But, you know, it goes back to, you know, I was sitting here thinking and it goes back to even, you know, it goes back from where the world wanted to change it. Now the church has decided to change it mm. because women wanted to fight for equal rights and equal pay, equal things. So it was like, we want to be looked at the same way. Yeah. So yeah. Now yeah. we want to be looked at the same way. Now we can hold the same positions mm. as a man. Yeah. We can do everything a man can do. Yeah. But if we really look at the Bible, a lot of times in the Bible, mm. women was way weaker than men at times. Yeah. Not yeah. that they was less, but they was weaker. Look at Job. Yeah. Job's yeah. wife told him if he would just curse God and because die. of what he was going through, mm -hmm. you would die and be done with it. Where Job, as a man, had more strength, more willpower to fight through it. Wow. Wow. And that's wow. the thing. It's like women don't understand that sometimes that men can carry so much more. Yeah. Women yeah. say, oh, we can carry a baby and we give you respect for all of those things. Right. But it is certain things that men carry way more. Men have to carry the family on their backs. Yeah. 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 Whether it's their siblings, whether it's their mother and father, whether yeah. it's their wives, whatever. Men carry that on their backs yeah. and they go through things and we don't boast about it. We don't brag wow. about it. We don't put it out there. Wow. Oh, we going through this and we women are so caught up in emotions that they are quicker to tell people, oh, I'm just so broke down. I'm just <laughs> so tired. I'm just this and I'm that. But in this reality, you want the power, you want the same title as a man, but you could never carry what a man carries at times. Wow. 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 I think that, that I think that's actually, uh, what do you think on that, Shanta? What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> um, I think you hit it. Head on the nail, for real. Um, Again, it goes back to what Peter said. The woman is the weaker vessel. Yes. When a woman is under pressure, she, a fool. she can't handle it. Naturally, she can't handle it. Wow. 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 However, there are things that God gives women, like, you know, women, babies, and all those things. Right. We find strength in that, you know, right. but we still may go through depression, postpartum, mm -hmm. all of those things that no one talks about, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I mean, brother said it, like when it comes to being under pressure, mm -hmm. a man is instilled in him mm -hmm. to push through. It's instilled in him to be quiet about it and keep pushing. Whereas women, oh, we need to tell, we need to call at least three people. <laughs> we need to tell five different people what we're going through. We may even need to go to the counselor so it's things that when we're under pressure, we need somebody, yeah. somebody to go to, somebody to talk to. And in some cases, 
men need that too, but at the same time, that shows you the power that they have that we don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I I think I think I agree. I, I really agree with that as well. Um, you know, but a lot of people would argue that, you know, you know, that, um, you know, perspective, mm -hmm. you know, where they would argue the fact that, hey, I can handle this and I can handle that. But even in the Bible, it just said in first Timothy that the woman, you know, the woman was deceived. Mm -hmm. You understand? So a lot quickly. <laughs> quickly, you know, so it, the Bible pointed out where that the we, the women are the weakest uh, vessel and the women are the weakest people to, you know, really carry the load and handle it. Mm -hmm. Because now here it is where, you know, here in today's society, a lot of the women carry, you know, their heart on their sleeve. They, call it, they carry their heart on their shoulders. You have them, you know, I will say so crazy. I was like, you know, they too busy getting BBLs and get. <laughs> <laughs> tummy tucks. And they too busy getting tummy tucks and BBLs and and, and, and and. <laughs> okay, we done. We done with that. Hold on. <laughs> Let me say this though. It's a beautiful thing at the end of the day, right? Right, right, right. Because you were made to be the weaker man. This just came to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Although we 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 get all out of whack. <laughs> The beauty of it, hold on one second. <laughs> the beauty of it is we were made to be the weaker vessel so we can always depend on the head, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is the head of the house, our husband. And yes. he is being led by God, right? Because we know that in the Bible it talks about, in First Corinthians it talks about the man, um, the man being the head of, uh, being a, a head of the wife, but then Christ being the head of him, right? Right, right, right. So it's like at the end of the day, we were made to be the weaker vessel because the Lord always wanted to keep that order intact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So us being the weaker vessel doesn't mean that we're less than. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It just means that we have a protector, mm -hmm. which we all want. Yeah, in society. Yeah. Try to make us feel like it's not something that we need. We can do it on our own. Mm, yeah, yeah. To keep us in single family household. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, and speaking of keeping keeping you in single family households, I think what what are your what are your views on uh feminism, you know, just uh, briefly, feminism. I um I could I could say for me the feminism is really, you know, I think it's really designed to uh, disrupt the God-given order that has been placed and to take men out of where they supposed to be and to, you know, uh, uh, put them in a place of, of, you know, how can you say that? Put them in the place of just uh, not being in authority. Mm -hmm. um, and really what it is, is I think is really the work of the enemy mm -hmm. trying to take the man out of the place where he can actually creep into the home and creep into the, the daily lives of individuals individuals of families i would say of families right. to take over you know the whole dynamic of 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 what's really happening in the spiritual realm right, right in the spiritual realm you know because now here in feminism you know it's really it's going hard now in today's society you know, where they are degrading men or they're uh, really cutting men, you know, to the point where it's like, yo, wait a minute. Hold on. You cutting me out of my place. You're cutting me out of where I belong. You're cutting instead of building the man and keeping the man lifted instead of praying for him, instead of making sure he stay in his position. It's more so of like, I'm going to go with, hey, if you can't handle it, let me, let me I'm going to push you to the side so I can get out there so I can get out front so I can make sure, you know, this is that. And, and it's like wait a minute hold on you got to respect the god-given order right. you know that has been placed you know in, in in the spiritual realm in the physical realm you know and things of that nature yeah. so i mean what what are your thoughts on feminism i'm i'm, I'm just putting it out there <laughs> i think she i think she <laughs> oh she was late okay i mean but like you said though it, it, it's created oh, i was waiting on you oh, okay it's, it, it, like you said it's created to this to demolish a uh, man, you know, to break down man. I mean, and, you know, mm -hmm. even listening to you talk, I can't sit here and say it's all 
women's fault because men, some men give up too easy. Yeah, yeah. Give up their yeah. positions, give up their titles, give up so many things easy, which makes these women feel powerful and yeah. uh, step in and want to do these things. So we have to, as men, stand up and do what we're supposed yeah. to do yeah. and lead yeah. and yeah. not let a woman push us to the side and tell mm-hmm. us mm-hmm. that they can do it because in reality, they can do it for only a short period of time. But yeah. a man is called to lead at all times. Yeah. And that's the thing that if men would stand up, be fathers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be the man they supposed to be at home first right. before you can leave even in the church. Right, right, but right. But if till they can get to that point, women are going to do this. They're going to push us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. Shanta, what, what do you think about feminism um, in your perspective? Um... <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that's, that can go so many different ways, you know, because we already know what that push is about. Yeah. Right. Um, for me, it's just evil. Is it's, it's trying. To, it's trying to convert men into um, transgender lifestyles. Oh. Oh. Um, I feel like that. That's the push now. The LGBT ah, that wow. community. Um, I, I believe that's more so what that is about because they're now even doing it through our little boys. Wow. Um, so I think that agenda is bigger than what we're paying attention to. Wow. Now I didn't expect you to say say that where you know uh the you know push men into transgender and the LGBT community because I I I think really to be honest that's exactly what's what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um nobody really wants to say it but I believe that's really what's happening in feminism and you know really um you know just to get just to be cutthroat with it you know it's pushing the men into you know that form of you know way of life flip flop and roll yeah yeah i i think i agree with you on that one you know because it's really become a very evil bad thing you know in um in today's society it, it, it's it's coming it's it's became very bad and evil in today's society and um I think right now um, in this topic, I believe a man's and a woman's place, I think a lot of things are acting out of com- uh, complex trauma mm. that hasn't been met. Mm. That's a good one. I believe I, I believe it's it's people acting out of complex trauma uh, uh, of needs that hasn't been met because they have needs because they have things uh, that happen to them because a man uh, 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 a father wasn't in the house or because a mother wasn't in the house because um, you know the dynamic of of their history or because of what happened to them maybe you know they was in a b- abusive relationship maybe they was dominated by you know uh, a man or dominated by a woman or you know i think a lot of people a lot of things have twisted and turned because of uh, people it's just acting out of the uh, complex trauma yeah. of of uh, from their needs that haven't been met because they because they needed you know uh that man you know to step up or because they you know that man was beating on them now they won't allow a man to run the house uh, yeah. you know they won't allow a man to be the the head of the house because once they get to that point it's like a man wants to take over a man wants to you know do whatever you know whatever the case may be so yeah 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 I, I think a lot of things are now out of action or acting out of complex trauma what do you guys think about that can go ahead <laughs> um, yeah you, I like to hear you talk um, but, um, I'll keep you back off of you, you know? um, but yeah uh, it's funny you say that because I believe you know just off experience and people that I have encountered I believe that most things come from trauma yeah yeah um, just from experience some things come from a lot of things this a lot of things come from childhood trauma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Like when the enemy comes to us and we're a child, mm. and a lot of times we don't realize that he grows up with us. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 
Um, so there's there's so much deliverance that has to happen even when you come into Christ mm -hmm. because there are things that you're connected to from your childhood mm -hmm. that that's when the enemy showed up, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I would say that sometimes it's not necessarily even what they have been through, but what they said they would never be. Ha ah, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because they seen it. Yes. Yes. And they became it. Mm. Mm. You are and it starts yeah. And and that's the thing, like you said, that trauma that, that builds up over time. And that's what leads into so many different roles. Like you said, men get in relationships and abuse that authority. Yeah. yeah. And then it makes it hard for women to love again. Yeah. And then you gotta go back to the fact of the thing of Oh, I was raised without a father. Right, right. So right. my mom did this. So my mom was a strong woman. So now I got to be this strong woman, and I don't need a man. And I'm so you know powerful and this and that. But in reality, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you ain't gonna find too many women that's gonna want to get out there and cut their grass every yeah, every other right, week or whatever. Right, right. So it's certain things, but that trauma that they have built up in, and like she said, it has built over time. Yeah. Like yeah. you said, if you feed something over time, it'll keep building. Mm -hmm, and if mm -hmm. it builds from a kid to adult, it's going to keep building. And when you become that woman, it's going to be so strong. Oh, I don't need a man. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I, I can do this by myself. I don't need a man. And that's what the world has shifted, has pushed us to. Yeah. Really pushed us to. I don't need a man. I don't. A man don't have to run my household. A man don't have to lead. I can do it. Women can do it. We can do it. And that's fine. You can but you will need a man. Yeah, yeah. At some point in time, and that's why I said, like she said, deliverance has to start with that trauma. Mm, yeah, yeah. When you get that, when you get that deliverance, mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. you can see things so much different. But women won't. Some women will never see that because they're holding on to the fact that I can do what a man can do. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? That's because you said something. I want to touch on. Little girls are broken because mommy was broken. Yep. Ah, yep. Mommy sometimes push that agenda on. I did it. If mm. I did it, you do it. Yep. Yes. I did what I had six of y'all and I did it all by myself. Mm. Yes. So now as a little girl, I grow up because that's my mom and I look to my mom. Mm. Yes. And her trauma becomes my trauma. Mm. Yes. Uh listen. And, and the crazy thing you said that is because now what we're seeing in the society, what we're seeing now in today's society is, is that, you know, just because and this is this is what I want to point out. Just because you're functional doesn't mean you're healed. Right. Doesn't mean you're healed just because you're functional. Just because things are going, just because just because you can preach, teach, you can run the house, you can do this and do that and, 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 and master a lot of these things doesn't mean you're healed, doesn't mean you're whole, doesn't mean you, you have overcame. It, 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 these are things that are happening and these are things that our children and people are witnessing. Oh, she overcame this. She overcame that. But then don't, don't really uh, uh, miss the point of the bitterness in the teaching, the bitterness in the preaching. The bitterness in in the the guiding, the bitterness in what what okay you could do this I did this I did this you did that and the, it's all out of bitterness. Mm -hmm. So just because you're functional doesn't mean you're all the way healed. And that's the thing. That's the thing is like there you're not all the way healed, and a lot of people are dealing with this exact issue. Yeah, but yeah. they want, don't want to be honest about it because I don't want nobody to see me weak. Ooh, I yeah. don't want to be seen weak or less because I have this issue. Yeah. And I've had this issue for 10 years, 5 years, 20 years. I grew up with this issue, but I don't want nobody to see this issue. Wow, wow. So the hidden things, I tell people all the time, when you pray, pray for the hidden things in your heart. Mm. Because those are some of the things that keep you in prison. Yeah. It doesn't keep anybody else in prison. It keeps you in prison. Yeah. Because you are trying to build an ego for somebody else to like. Mm. <laughs> I like that. Instead of really just being genuine and saying, hey, I, I need help from this hurt that happened when I was a little, little girl. Yeah. Or I was a little boy and this happened to me. I need help to get over this. Yeah. 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 Because we take things and we bottle it up or we sweep it under the rug and we just let it pile up over time yeah yeah and yeah. now you've grown and you got a whole pile that you don't want to never sit down and talk about mm, mm, 
Mm, I, 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 I like that. I like that. I like that. That's, that's actually really good. That's actually really good. I, I think, um, I think a lot of things are, are moving and shifting into, you know, uh, to basically get the men out of, out of, uh, out of the head. You know, there's not to say that I have a problem with women pastors. I don't have a problem with them at all. Um, I've met a lot of them. I was actually under, you know, as a kid under the leadership of one. And, you know, uh, one of those things that, you know, once you start reading the word for yourself, uh, you start to um, understand why God placed these things in order. Why God put these things in perspective, why Paul, you know, put said these things, why things, you know, and like I said earlier, these things are not to diminish women. These things are not to shun women. These things are not to overthrow women. The, these are things that are are biblically uh, are done in order for a reason. You know, and it's not to say because I, I've I've met women bishops. I still don't understand that to this day. Um, but, at, you know, hey, to each his own. <laughs> I, I, I don't like I said, I don't have no problem in y'all titles or in what y'all doing with y'all, you know, titles and, and order of services and, and church uh, order. However, the case may be. Is it Bible? Mm -hmm. Is it Bible? You know, and that's 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 what we have to um you know, understand to this day, is it Bible? Is it one of those things where you actually say, hey, I'm going to teach out of the Bible, but are we actually living the Bible? Mm -mm. I can I can tell people what to do from out of the Bible, but it, but at the same time, I'm I'm not following the same guidelines. I'm not following the same the same thing. But then now society is getting mad when you you say, hey, that's not in the Bible for a woman to be a bishop. Now you you starting a whole argument. A whole argument. You you're starting a whole argument That's at the right. point of, you know, like, whoa, wait a minute. It, this is Bible. Why is this an argument? Even the Bible says you you don't don't argue the word. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's what it says. Yeah, that's what it says. Don't there is no argument. None. So why why in the world should there be, you know, b well, over here it says this and over here, but it strictly says as a bishop a uh, 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 bishop is a, a a husband of one wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's that's Bible. But but it goes back to what we just said earlier: power and authority. Yeah, yeah. It goes back to that power struggle that I want to be more than a man. Yeah, I want that title because it'll put me above man. Yeah, and that's what women—not all women, but some women—are fighting for to be equal with man. Yeah, and the title would never justify that. Yeah, yeah. they think it will. I can put on a robe like him, and I can look just as good, but I can sashay in my robe better because he can't, mm. and I can look better in my robe that he can't, and I can get more attention in my robe than he can because oh. I'm a woman. Oh, okay. but in reality, you're nothing. I mean, you know, you're. Hey, let's be real. Women bishops are out here for the title. <laughs> and I, I, hey, it, hey, I ain't pointing fingers at nobody, but you have so many that are chasing titles. Yeah. Don't have churches, don't have nobody up under them. Yeah. None of yeah, that. Yeah. But I'm a bishop. Who, what, what are you bishoping over? Yeah. Yeah. Who are you leading? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. ain't leading nobody. You, you're, you're doing foolishness. Right, right, right. Yeah. And that's what it really boils down to is they're chasing that title to be equal with man. And that's the thing. We're, it, this world, it's enough yeah. chase, title chasing as it is. Yeah. We yeah. don't need that title chasing. Just hold your place. Yeah, just hold your place and, you know, hold – Hold, hold, hold your place and hold, stand your ground because you can be great, you know, in the position you're in. And that's what I totally believe. You can be, you know, great in the position you're in. My thing is I was having a conversation with uh, Mario and you can, um, you know, I want to get your feedback too, Shanta, on this where I was telling him, you know, we when you're trying to push people out of their purpose, when you're trying to push people out of um, out of where they supposed to be, they become disoriented. And when I say purpose, I mean, some people just um, are purpose to be just a mother. But when you know, 
when you're saying, hey, you're more than a mother, you're more than this. You can be out here encouraging women and encouraging this and then doing this and empowering and all this other when the purpose of their life is just to be a mother and be the mother, the best mother you can be. You understand? So I'm looking at the the character, you know, um, you know, the person, Jesus, mo- uh, Jesus, mom, you know, uh, Mary. She wasn't called to encourage all these, you know, uh, uh, because she birthed Jesus. She didn't have an actual ministry because she birthed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because she birthed Jesus, now I got to go out here and start a whole women's ministry. I got to start a whole, you know, uh, 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 thing where you know all the women can find find their place and I find tell th- my story. Yeah, I got to tell the story. She stayed in her place yeah. as the mother of Jesus, and she was good at it. Mm-hmm. She did what she was supposed to do. You understand? And that was to be the mother of Jesus. And that was to be the wife of Joseph. You understand? So, you know, my thing is, I don't mind people pushing other people into whatever. But if it's not their purpose, if God didn't. And that's why I respected what you said earlier, where God, if if God hasn't brought you out or or called you or or, or, or put you out, you know, as of yet, you're going to stay where you are until he does. And that's important that she said that because so often we jump out because we want to jump out. Yeah. But understanding there's a time and a place and for everything. Yeah. And that's yeah. the thing. When she said that, that was like, that was dope to hear because so many people, oh, I'm an evangelist now and I can go out here and tell people my story and I can, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, 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 but where's God in I? Well, right, right, right. So when she said that, I was like, that's good because now she's, she's being led by the spirit. Yeah, yeah. She's not going on her own, but she's being led by the spirit. She's waiting for the okay to go out. Yeah. She's yeah. waiting for the next direction. Where, where, where am I going? What am I supposed to do? Yeah. I'm following your path. Half. And that's the thing that that was beautiful that she said it because so many people jump out there. Yeah, yeah. Because I have this title now. I'm evangelist. Yeah. I can yeah. go from your church to <laughs> their church and over there, and I'm gonna get this love offering. Yeah, yeah. But what are you doing ministry wise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you listening to God? Yeah. Or are you just teaching and preaching what you want to teach and preach instead of waiting and letting everything manifest? Yeah. And then when it's time to let it blossom, yeah. she'll blossom. And that's the good thing about it is let time, let God lead you. And that way you will blossom when you're supposed to blossom. Yeah. You yeah. arrive when you're supposed to arrive, not when man wants you to arrive, but when God tells you to arrive. And that's the most beautiful thing you could ever do is show up when God wants you to show up. Yeah. I like that. I like that. What's what's your what's your take on, you know, um, the divine purpose of a woman and actually just staying grounded? I mean, I I can understand. I could definitely I know the answer, but still, I I want you to I want you to put it out there. Um, Well, we know we talked about titles. Titles ain't going to get you in here. It's your length. It's your length. The second thing is we're so caught up on the things on the earth where what keeps me grounded and you know sometimes I am I am questioning God like okay God you know I feel it I I, I, I see the purpose but I'm still waiting but what keeps me waiting is for one it keeps me in a place that I need to be in as a woman right 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 and outside of that my goal is to make it into heaven. Mm-hmm. That hey, hey, I, I love I don't, it. I don't want to scarcely make it in. Mm. So when your goal become beyond the things of this earth, mm. Mm. you will position yourself to be able to hear from God, do what God says, stay in His order, and make sure you're doing things in decency because you're thinking beyond the earth. Yeah. Why am I thinking that way? Because God gave me a birthday and he didn't give me an expiration. Oh, listen, listen. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. <laughs> so if I'm honoring, if I've honored God all day today and I don't wake up in the morning, I want to know that he's pleased. Right. Wow. Wow. And we don't think about that. We we make plans for 
oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to build this church and I'm expecting this many members in 2025. The Lord is coming and he's going to bless you tremendously and he's going to do this. And you don't even know if you're going to wake up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. So we have to get in a position of doing what God tells us in the moment and mm. being obedient to him in that moment. Right. Mm. Yeah. So we can continue to hold on. <laughs> so we can be with God, but not just like I'm trying to get crowned. I'm trying to have my white robe. Shoot, I'm, I'm even trying to get a in heaven. Yeah. I'm not trying to be with everybody. No. So it's it's really just about your goals. And my goals is being on the earth. Yeah. And the people of God have to get to that place. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's what we lack. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I, I really I thought I think that was really dope what you said. Um, you know, God has given us a birth date, but not an expiration date. Mm -hmm. And that's that's God showing us, hey, I could give you give you just a little taste of something that I hold in my hand. But however, the case may be once that expiration date comes, you know, it's like, hey, you know, I can I can take this right now. Right now. <laughs> and, and that's the thing, you know, it, it was that was good. But, you know, like I said, I went to a play Saturday and um, it was a Martin Luther King play. And it was dope. It was a dope play. Um, and one of the things that I loved about it was when it came for his expiration date, he had, I, I ain't finished. Mm, I got mm. so much more to do. Talk about it. I, I still got to, I still got to lead the people. I still got to do this. And I still got to do that. He had so many, oh, I got so many plans. I, I just can't lead the people. I got to do this. I got to do that. But that's the thing. If we do what we supposed to do day by day, mm. when that time comes, whatever is left, that was never meant for us to do. Yes, 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 Come yes. On. Because we can't do what we ain't here to do. That's right. That's and that's right. the thing. But if we live every moment to please him and to do what he tell us to do, when that time comes, yeah. no, we may not be ready naturally, but spiritually we'll realize, listen, I'm going to get my role. Yeah, that's right. That's I'm going right. to walk the streets of gold. That's I, right. Hey, I'm that's transitioning. Right, right, right. This right. earthly home doesn't mean more to me than that, that heavenly home. Yeah. Because yeah. when I get to that heavenly home, I ain't got to work as hard. Mm. I ain't got to worry about depression. I ain't got to worry about stress, anxiety, yeah. sickness, yeah. none of that. Yeah, yeah. So therefore, I'm going to live in the moment every day. So every day of my life, what I'm doing is what I'm supposed to do. I, I, I like that. I like that. I like that because, you know, it, it really it really um, speaks volume because everybody get caught up you know, in what they're trying to do and what they want to do. They're worrying about the next revival. They're worrying about the next, you know, meeting, camp meeting. Mm -hmm. And things, and the crazy thing is a lot of people, um, a lot of things are avoided in routine. Mm -hmm. A lot of things are avoided in routine. That's prayer. That's that's uh, uh, you, you're you thinking about yourself. That that's getting your life right. But we're so caught up in routine yep. that a lot of those things are avoided. Yep. You know, even in relationships with a man and a woman, a lot of things. Even COVID. Um, you know, being home by you know with our spouses really uh, solidified that uh, you really are married or with the wrong person that you can't even stay in the house with over 48 hours. Mm -hmm. And this is what's happened. Yeah. A lot of divorces, a lot of people that are, are separated, a lot of people that can't stay under one roof. You know, a lot of things have been avoided, yeah. you know, um, um, you know, in routine because we take off here, because we take off there, because we're doing this program, because we're doing that program, because we got this type of uh, event that's going on, because we got that event going on. Now, a lot of things are avoided yep. in that type of, you know, routine. You know, and I think coming, coming, bringing the topic back to back to the ground where we have to really sit down and solidify the role that we are in, in our marriages, in our relationships, in our homes, in our churches, in our, you know, uh, because the church is now chaos because don't nobody know their place. Mm -hmm. Don't nobody know their role, not a title. Mm -hmm. Don't nobody know their role, their place. You know, as a as a person uh, 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 that's God given, you know, uh, in in this in this situations. So I, I really think that, you know, 
the the body and the church and the people um, really needs to strip all this mess and this foolishness and really understand the place that they're in. You know what I'm saying? Because now you got chaos in your house. You got chaos in the church. You got chaos in everything you do because you in the wrong place. You are in the wrong place. I'm going to tell you this. So the first thing that needs to happen is our people need to be delivered. First of all. Oh, listen, we say that deal with our trauma. That's the first thing. The second thing is we need to be focused on the fruits of the spirit so we can be who we need to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only way we can be in that position is go after the fruit mm, that the Lord. Talks about. Yeah. If you focus more on the fruit than mm-hmm. your, than, than your title, mm-hmm. then yeah. you can get in position. Mm-hmm. Oh, say that. Say that. Say that one more time. Just say that one more time for the people. For the people in, in the, the back. back. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? If you can get <laughs> in, if, if if you can focus on the fruit of the spirit, uh huh, then you instead of a title, uh huh, you can get in position. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. To work where you know to to be in the land that you should be in. Yeah, yeah. I, I so th- focus on the fruit, and that's going to lead you mm. to the right position. Right. <sighs> Listen, that, you that's g- it right there. I mean, like you said, if we focus on the fruit, yeah, if and you not the positions and titles, the, the the people ain't focusing on no fruit. No, they, they want the titles. They want titles. Give me bishop. They they they, they the fruit ain't ain't nothing. They they think the fruit is just one of those things. Like yeah, just hand me this and hand me that, mm-hmm. and, and and just give me the title. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and taking on more than they can bite or eat, mm-hmm. you know. And I think yeah, that's, and I, yeah. That, and I see so many. Um, I do go out and visit churches, right? Right. Um, but again, God has me in a safe place. But there are some churches I go to that are good. But there's some church, a lot of churches that I've been in where I see a lot of false grace, mm. a lot of false love. Yeah. A lot of oh. Oh, we love you. We love you. you love, and ain't no fruit. <laughs> You're saying it, but there's no fruit, and it doesn't show because the Bible says you would know them by their fruit. By the fruit, by the fruit. You're not fooling nobody. <laughs> You're not fooling the child of God. Ah. You definitely ain't fooling God. So that's why the Lord says that the road is narrow, and this is something that the Lord dealt with me with. He said the reason why I said that it's so narrow because there's so many people that lack. Mm, mm. And that's why it's hard to get into heaven because a lot of us don't have fruit of the spirit. Wow, wow, wow. They lack fruit. So so you saying that you be you go to churches, they, they ain't got no fruit, but they showing you fake love. They fake they get- fake love and false grace. Mm, that's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Fake love and false grace. So when you go to the people, man, when you go visit these church, these people show up. Fake love and false grace. Now that's something. Now that I ain't gonna lie, that'll preach false grace. Jesus, mm-hmm. Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> People's going doing fake love and false grace. That is wow, wow. I think I, I really agree with you on that. You know, um, because you know a, a lot of people, a lot of Christians, a lot of believers uh, lack uh, the fruit. Yeah, uh, a lot of believers really lack fruit, and you know, and it's one of those things that, and it's sad that you're a believer and you lack fruit, and it's sad that you are you know in positions and with titles and different things of that nature and you lack the very important thing that god um really really wants you to have Mm -hmm. you know even to enter into the kingdom so i think because of what's now important and i'm just going to name a few what's now important is shouting videos if you could shout right um, if you can, if you can hit the keyboard right or zoom in shot good, music, zoom, zoom in good, zoom, now, give zoom a, in good, give me two step, do now. your two step, two yeah. step that that's that's what people now. If you could show a good shouting going in or somebody, uh, you know, somebody really Ow. falling out in the spirit, or if you can pray and and you got a domino effect, you can you know if you can do do all this other crazy. If you if you can show these things on social media, I think you know that's what's important right now so um the fruit of the spirit is not being taught anymore 
um, you know, redemption, um, you know, hell is not even being um, in sermons anymore. Um, you know, you know, hell, fire and brimstone is not being in sermons no more. Um, you have, you know, things like topics on, you know, will you make it to heaven or, um, you know, uh, the lake of fire, you know, um, these things are not being, um, you know, put in, put into, put into perspective because everybody wants a blessing at the end of the day. Everybody uh, is concerned of a blessing. Everybody is um, motivated by what they can get. Um, everybody is motivated by uh, what what you have on or what they have on or what church shoes or what church hat or what church outfit is uh, what they're going to they going to they know what they're going to wear Friday before Sunday. Um, so <laughs> this is these are the things that, you know, because uh, these are now the importance of. The, the believers in the church and the Christianity. So even the, the husband and wife, if you guys, if I, I need to be under leadership of husband and wife, if, if they, they got to look good together, they got to match, they got to, you know, they got to sit uh, uh, in the pulpit and, you know, first lady and first lady. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hat, and the hat and the gloves and the first lady has to conduct them, mm -hmm. conduct herself accordingly. Mm -hmm. And the first lady can't, act like this and act like that and and be like this and be like that and 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 you know uh the, the, and and this is what have now you know been you know been conducive to the church now yeah, that's what the church this is, is what the church, church is about now church has its own culture now. Yeah, well yes yes i agree the church has its own culture now mm -hmm. and that is something that is really and it's tearing up the dynamic of a man and a woman too yeah it's tearing mm -hmm. it up it's really tearing down it's tearing down the place of a man and a woman because that's no more um that's no more existing nowadays you know my thing is and i've been telling um quite a few people this that the church is supposed to be a hospital yeah 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 but we trust more in man than we do god well yeah yeah that's what you know do. we'll run to the hospital and get a diagnosis before we run to god yeah yeah yeah. We'll run, doctor tell us they got to cut our big toe off, then come back and cut it off and be like, oh, no, it wasn't that toe. No. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing is, but it's like the church have conformed to so many other prosperity and different things that we got away from the real reality of what church really supposed to be. You know, and I think, you know, me, uh, you know, you know what I really believe. And, um, you know, the co-host said this, he's, you know, and he really, it really shed a lot of light on what's really happening in, in the body of Christ. Now, people have not really been converted mm -hmm. in spirit and in truth to really become an authentic believer. No. People have not converted in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. To become an authentic believer. Mm -hmm. And I really uh, believe that, you know, and to be converted in spirit and in truth is to receive the spirit of the Holy Ghost, to receive to receive the, the you know, to to know the word and to really live the word and to really, you know, believe and speak the word, live and breathe the word. So a lot of things are not happening because those are not the re no longer the requirements to become a Christian or a b actual authentic believer. Yep. But then now, if I could say this and say that Sounds now good. I have the authority to empower. Sound good. It sounds See, good. We are, we are so traditional. The very thing that Jesus came to break. Yeah. Yeah. We are so traditional. Um, we want to, the, the, new, the, Younger generation, they want to create a culture around Christianity. And then you got the older folks who just want to hold on mm -hmm. to their ways. And yeah. Want to change. Yeah. 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 Um, so you got two different types of tradition, traditional things going on that does nothing for the body of Christ. Ooh, nothing. say that. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that is good stuff. That is, it does nothing for the body of Christ. I, I I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. But I really enjoyed this topic. I really have um, enjoyed you um, really coming on with us and really shedding some 
sending some good stuff with us, man. And, and I, I, I really, <laughs> it's a, we could go on and on with this. I'm telling you right now, we could really Let me go. Say this. Cause I want to speak to my woman that's on the on the uh, live right now. Okay, speak to her. When you get in alignment, because we have so many women, um, and we have some good women. Yeah, yeah. That are single, you mm-hmm. know, some, some women that um don't mind being no people and also know their place. Yeah. But we do, I, because of society and the way that things are going for men, it's a little drought out here. Okay, 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 yes. So, let me say this. God is always going to be kind. Yeah, yeah. No man can stop it. Yeah. The government can't stop it. I don't care how many agendas they push. God is never going to stop being God. So, ladies, you know that the Bible says, man that finds a wife for all the good things. Yeah, yeah, So, yeah. you be patient. Yes. You continue to be the woman of God. Yes. You continue to follow the order and the steps of the Lord, and your husband will come. Absolutely, that's I, 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 that's that's real good stuff. I really appreciate that. That's really good stuff. I really appreciate that that ending word. So we gonna get up out your face and up out your ear. I really love this this whole topic, and I think we gonna I think we gonna try to bring it back when 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 the other uh, co-host is back because I think it's some more to be said. I really do. I really do think it's some more to be said, and I think it's some more to be be had. So, um, yeah, I, I, I really appreciate you coming on. I really appreciate you, you know, really uh, speaking out um, on this topic. And um, we definitely going to have you back um, because I really love the dynamic that we have here. So, definitely, definitely, you heard it here. So, we're going to go ahead and get it out of there. I'm your boy, Sublis the Artist. I'm your brother. I'm your nephew. I'm your cousin. But I ain't your daddy. And it's your boy, Mario. <laughs> and we are. And, it's your... and this is Evangelist Shanta. Follow me. <laughs> y'all follow her on all social media outlets. Evangelist Shanta, y'all know where to find her, alright? So listen, we finna get up out of here, alright? Peace. Thank you.